Does using a cell phone impact your sperm? What do you need to know if you want to get pregnant? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. So I'm a fertility doctor. And every single day I talk about fertility, I talk about your body, your health, your hormones. And my passion is to try to help people get pregnant if they want to, grow the family they want, but truly have the education you need to advocate for your own health. And one of these things that has bothered me for so long is the passive approach to fertility in general, meaning you prevent pregnancy at whatever cost, and then suddenly one day you're going to turn around and try to have a family. And sometimes there's just such a huge disconnect that we know that when we're ready to start, we just don't even have the information we need. And then there's so much extraneous information from the world, what is true and what is not. So that's what this channel tries to do is break down the facts so that you can know. I get asked all the time about things that can impact sperm. Very interestingly, sperm is made every single day. 1,500 sperm are made every second, 200 to 300 million sperm a day. So unlike women who are born with all the eggs you're ever going to have and you run out of them over time, men are constantly generating brand new sperm. This process is fascinating. The lifespan of a sperm is about 90 days in total from the beginning of creation until it becomes present in the ejaculate. 72 days across development of the testes and then 18 days to get through the ejaculatory system. So this means that our sperm are very fragile, but also easily influenced by the world around us. One question I hear all the time is, what about cell phone use? Now, why do people ask this? One of the reasons why is that we know that heat can impact testicular function. This is why your testes are in a scrotum outside your body, because they are meant to be at a lower temperature than your core body temp. So having the scrotum, keeping them outside of the abdominal cavity is allowing the testes to be at a lower core temperature. So anything that causes a constant increase in temperature, things such as sitting in a hot tub, sauna use, laptop in lap use, even very prolonged cycling where there's compression and heat generation of the testes, those things can all impact sperm production, but also motility, morphology, and some of the different parameters we look at at a semen analysis. In a semen analysis, what we look for is how much sperm is being made, the concentration, how the sperm moves, and then how the sperm is shaped. You may be shocked to know that most sperm are actually abnormally shaped. But there are behaviors, there's things you're exposed to that can make these numbers worse and therefore potentially make it harder to get pregnant. And a common question is about, well, what about cell phones? Especially because guys often can keep them in a front pocket. Is it better to keep it on a back pocket or not on your person? Cell phones can get hot. They also have a radio frequency electromagnetic field. And does that potentially cause radiation that could influence our sperm? These are questions that people have been asked. So there was a study published in Fertility and Sterility, which is the leading journal for reproductive medicine. And it's called Association Between Self-Reported Mobile Phone Use and the Semen Quality of Young Men. So the glaring conclusion, we're going to go big and then come down. So the conclusion is that large population-based study suggests that higher mobile phone is associated with lower sperm concentration and total sperm count. So if you were going to make a one-liner based off this, phone use, bad sperm. All right, but let's dig into it more. What's interesting is that the study occurred between 2005 to 2018, and it is from military base. So people did not always have access to their phone on their body all the time. And if you think back to the phones in 2005, it wasn't quite like a little computer in your hand like we have now, and people access their phones so much. One thing that's so interesting, if you look at how they associated phone use, was how many times per week or day you used the phone. And so the options for phone use were less than one time per week, one to five times per day, five to 10 times per day, 10 to 20 times per day, or more than 20 times per day. And they also stratified the study based on different time periods, because what's interesting is that even though people might use their phone more now, the phones are made differently, and the radio frequency of the phones are actually a lot less now, even though the phones are more powerful, even though they can do more, they're not transmitting as much radiation. So the group that had the highest concentration of sperm, so their body was making the most sperm, was those who used their phone less than one time per week. If you compare the group, I use my phone less than one time per week, I use my phone more than 20 times per day, there was a very big difference between these groups, meaning the group that used their phone 
20 times per day or more had a 20% decrease in the concentration and the total sperm count than the other group. Interestingly, the motility and the morphology or the shape of the sperm was not correlated with how often somebody used their phone. And this data demonstrates a linear trend, meaning the more you used it, the worse it was. But when you look at the data between different years of the phone, between 2005 to 2007, the association was strongest between people who used their phone more and had worse semen counts. And that association decreased in the subsequent time periods. So as phone technology has improved, the impact on the sperm has diminished, even though people are using it more frequently. The study also looked at position of the phone, your pocket, back pocket, front pocket, does it matter? There was no impact on sperm counts, no matter where the phone was kept. So I think that that can help us feel more comfortable with how often somebody might be carrying their phone. Somebody did ask me recently, they like to put their phone under their scrotum when they're driving, if that could potentially be harmful. And we do know that phones can heat up. So remember, one study might be looking at radio frequency, but if we're truly putting something that is warmer right directly on the scrotum, we might see a different result. So this doesn't mean go wild, carry your phone by your scrotum. And again, since there's been a linear association clearly seen as phones have changed from 2G to 3G to 4G and having more networks, there's less power being output, less radio frequency. The association between that sperm count and the phone use was diminished. Now, what's important is that this study just looked at sperm counts and sperm counts are one variable and they're important in fertility, but it's not actually telling us if this impacts fertility or not. There's only been one other study that actually looked at cell phone use in men and the ability to get pregnant. This was a prospective fecundability study, meaning not intervening, just watching a population as they try to get pregnant in North America and in Denmark, and then looked at cell phone location to see if it impacted sperm count or quality or the ability to get pregnant, and no association was found. And that study was published in 2021, so a little bit of a newer cohort, possibly reflecting newer technology. If we think about why this could play a role or what is important, we do know that cell phone usage and radio frequency electromagnetic fields increases the temperature by about half a degree Fahrenheit. This could impair the testes function, the ability to produce sperm, and could increase DNA damage, as well as increasing inflammation or oxidative stress. So this study can be taken a couple different ways. One, there was a correlation seen between increased use of phones and an impact on sperm. Importantly, there's never been an association between cell phone use and difficulty getting pregnant. However, Phone technology has changed, but people are using their phone more than ever. Could you imagine if we did the study now and I asked how many times a day do you use your phone? Everybody's going to be in the more than 20 category. So with cell phone usage being so widespread, with people carrying it on their body, I think we do have to be mindful that there is a potential way that this is impacting our body. And we see this impact in sperm count, especially when we're looking at the highest and the lowest group. Who do you know uses their phone less than one time per week? So a more accurate representation might be that the difference is not seen as much in the newer groups because there's so few people in that smaller group. Everybody is in the higher groups. So a take home message is just like everything in moderation. I think that cell phone uses are great. I'm recording this video on one right now, but whenever you can leave it, charge it, don't keep it on your body. When you're home, it doesn't need to be in your pocket. Know that the temperature is going to rise some. So as my friend who keeps his phone under his scrotum, let's not do that one. Ask your sperm questions below and I'm happy to answer them. You can follow along for more information on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD or listen to the As A Woman podcast. Thanks friends.